Hey guys, and welcome back to the ASX Investor Channel. Today we'll be deep diving into Weebit Nano's recent significant announcement surrounding its demonstration of production level parameters for its re-ram technology at 28 nanometers. This was a huge announcement. However, it was probably overlooked a little bit by the market because it was quite a tech heavy announcement. And I think investors might have overlooked the actual significance of what this means for Weebit's re-ram technology and also the ASX WBT story moving forward. Weebit Nano actually posted this photo that you can see here in front of you on their official Twitter. And you might be wondering, what is 28 nanometer? What does 40 nanometer mean? Why is this so significant for RERAM? And why is this potentially the future of next generation memory technology moving forward? In today's video, we're going to hopefully answer all of these questions for you. So we hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it out as well. We make daily videos on the channel. So if you're new here, welcome. Make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. You'll be updated every time we drop a new video. Just before we dive in, a reminder that I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we talk about on the channel is financial advice. These stocks we cover are not buy recommendations. These videos are just general discussions to be the starting spot for you to do your own research from. I do think it's quite a fascinating discussion because we know there was so much excitement and fanfare surrounding the recent Skywater announcement for the first commercial agreement for Weebit. And of course, this was a significant announcement. However, this arguably could be just as significant for the trajectory of Weebit's growth story moving forward. Yet it seems like it was overlooked by the market. And it speaks to the fact that there is often a bit of information arbitrage or the opportunity for people who understand the disruptive and innovative sectors to be able to get ahead of the market in some certain circumstances. So before deep diving into why this is such a significant announcement for Weebit Nano's RERAM technology and getting into the specifics surrounding geometry size and why it's important for the semiconductor space, it makes sense for us to take a step back and have a look at the actual announcement itself. As we can see here, Weebit, together with their technology partner Letty, demonstrated production level parameters for the RERAM technology at 28 nanometers. It's a key step in the development of the technology for the embedded memory market. And of course, we know that Weebit Nano is aiming to bring their next generation memory technology on in two different stages. Initially, they're focusing on the embedded memory market. They hope to be able to provide significant solutions in spaces such as AI, autonomous driving, 5G and advanced Internet of Things technology, embedding their RAM technology with customers' products. But eventually, they may look to also develop into the discrete memory market over the next few years as well. As you can see, Weebit's RERAM is well positioned to be a key memory technology for embedded non-volatile memory for advanced process nodes, where flash memory is no longer feasible. And we'll talk about what this means throughout the video as well. We'd love to know your thoughts, so drop in a comment below what you thought about Weebit Nano's recent announcement and what you think this means for the ASX WBT story moving forward. And so with that understanding about the announcement, it makes sense for us to dig a little bit deeper and have a think about why geometries matter and why this is so significant for the development of the technologies that will feed into the semiconductors. As we know here, RERAM is touted as a flesh memory replacement. We've been, have been discussing it, but there's a range of different developers developing their own solutions in the RERAM space as well. We know that flash memory is starting to reach capacity. And of course, as we develop more and more complex technologies, and these technologies become integrated with our day-to-day -day life, we're going to need newer and more advanced next generation memory technology solutions to feed into these. And embedded flash memory is no longer technically nor economically feasible at smaller geometries. Of course, we know that as a society, we're moving towards developing smaller technologies, smaller processes, computing at the edge is going to be more and more important. The Internet of Things has only just started, but imagine as that rolls out and proliferates through our day-to-day -day life. All of these technologies are going to require smaller solutions, and this is why smaller processes and smaller geometries are important. You can see here on the right, we've all heard about Moore's Law. It's the observation that the number of transistors on chips doubles every two years, but on the other side of the coin, that the cost of computers halves as well. And this all feeds into it. But underlying it all, semiconductors are moving as a cohort towards smaller geometries for more advanced processes moving forward. And so then this brings us to the 28 nanometer process. This is a cohort that continues to grow. As the geometries get smaller and more delicate and more intricately designed, the cost of wafer manufacturing rises. Of course, you want to make sure that you're still getting the same performance or similar type of performance. And the trade-off for the development of this space is always on performance and reliability on one side. And then of course, the cost of production on the other side, because these costs will eventually be passed on to the end users. And so you want to be able to bring those costs down as much as possible. That balance has often found a sweet spot in and around that 40 nanometer mark over the past period. However, as we develop these smaller and more advanced technologies, as we've spoken about, it's starting to seem like this 28 nanometer spot is going to continue to offer fantastic value, balancing performance and price. And we'll continue to see more production lines focusing on this area and it rolling out in more and more technologies around the world. 
There's an opportunity for 28 nanometer geometries for applications across the board for many of these next generation technologies like Internet of Things, edge computing and autonomous vehicles. And as the 28 nanometer technology matures, market demand will continue to grow for these processes as more technologies and products are developed using this. On the right here, you can see this has been pulled out of Taiwan Semiconductor's 2020 annual report. We all know that TSMC are one of the largest foundries in the world. They've got a huge scale and a massive customer base as well. You can see here that the 28 nanometer mark is was one of their largest revenue lines. And of course, as this space continues to grow and more products are developed on this line, we can foresee that it's likely to continue to expand into. And this is why it was so important and significant that Weebit Nano was able to demonstrate their next generation reram technology at 28 nanometer. Of course, it hasn't been finalized. There's still a huge amount of research and development ahead in the story, but the fact that it was shown initially has garnered a lot of ASX investor interest in the story. And just for some additional insights on the 28 nanometer milestone, leaders from both Letty, the technology partner, as well as the CEO of ASX WBT, Kobe Hanok, has provided some insights about what it means. And so having a look at some of these quotes that have been taking out, Oliver Feynot, the head of silicon component division at Letty, stated that the semiconductor industry is constantly moving to smaller geometries. As we discussed, embedded flash, which is the current incumbent technology, faces scalability challenges below 40 nanometers and it's reaching capacity, particularly as the technologies and products are becoming more and more advanced. The industry has been crying out for a new technology to succeed flash memory in advanced geometries as they get more and more smaller and complex. And these results show that Weebit has a potentially viable solution with their WBT reram. And then from Kobe Hanok, the CEO of Weebit, he stated that through their close partnership with Letty, they've developed and demonstrated significant advancements with their reram technologies at larger geometries. But now they've shown that they success can successfully scale it down to 28 nanometers. And interestingly, he provided a quote from the chairman of Taiwan Semiconductor, the world's largest fab, as we've mentioned, who recently called the 28 nanometer spot the sweet spot for embedded memory applications moving forward. This is a huge piece of validation for the story. And of course, there's now going to be focus about how this can be rolled out, firstly in the lab and in development, and then ultimately if it can be rolled out at scale with further commercial discussions moving forward. And so with all that understanding, with that discussion, I guess the story is what happens next for ASX WBT. Hopefully with that overview, you've got more of an insight now into why Weebit posted this on their Twitter. Flash is reaching a dead end. It's reaching capacity at that 40 nanometer mark. As we move to more and more advanced geometries like the 28 nanometer and even smaller moving forward, there needs to be new generation solutions. RERAM is more cost effective than Flash. It's faster than Flash and more reliable than Flash. And along with that, it has the ability to continue to scale as well into new geometries. There's a lot of excitement into it, but I think first and foremost, the most important thing to remember as well is that the development of disruptive technologies and the process towards commercialization is a long journey. R&D is a long journey and WeeBit is on the verge of commercialization now, but there's still a long runway ahead of them. And I think this also speaks to the fact that we know that their markets are not fully efficient. There's often discussions, if you studied business at university, you would have heard about the efficient market theory. But we've seen here, there was so much excitement surrounding the Skywater Agreement, the first commercial agreement. However, for many of those longer term investors in Weebit Nano, for them, this announcement may have been just as significant. I think the first commercial agreement often seemed like a case of when and not if. It was forecasted quite significantly by the leadership team at Weebit Nano. So eventually it looked inevitable that one was gonna come through. However, getting into these more advanced geometries and developing new technologies at this type of scale, it's not a foregone conclusion. It takes time and to be able to prove this through the R&D, it's significant. And this is why this looks like such a transformative opportunity for Weebit Nano moving forward. Of course, investors will continue to watch for the opportunity to roll out into the embedded memory space for further potential commercial agreements, and then looking further onto the horizon as well at the opportunity to move into that dis discrete space moving forward. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out as well. As mentioned, we make daily videos on the channel. So if you're new here, make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. This past period, we've interviewed a range of different CEOs on the channel. So we'll leave links to those up above that you can check out after this one. We'd love to know your thoughts on it all. So drop in a comment below what you thought about this announcement and where you think ASX WPT heads from here. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. For now, stay well and happy investing.